three races, three different overall winners. Chase Sexton takes round one. Jason Anderson grabs a first career win at Hangtown. And Ken Roxon scores a shocking come from behind victory at Colorado. Parody reigns in the premier class of Pro Motocross. 450 Moto 1 from High Point is next. We're just south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for round four of the 2022 Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing. It's the Lucas Stabilizer High Point National. Fans have been treated to fantastic racing. Three winners in the first three rounds of the series in the 450 classes started with an absolutely dominant run by Chase Sexton at round one in California. In California's round two, Jason Anderson, his first ever pro motocross win, and Ken Roxon stole the overall victory on the last lap last week in Colorado, a track he has great history on. But he's not too shabby at this track, which is High Point Raceway, the rolling hills of Pennsylvania. Hello, everyone. Jason Wygant joined by the six-time AMA national champion, Brock Lever. We have seen great racing and a lot of parity in the 450 class. And what we saw this morning, looks like we might have more. Absolutely. When we saw Jason Anderson put the fastest qualifying in, coming in the second practice session, and that's not easy to do because the track got slower. So is he going to have a bounce back win, or are we going to see the number three Yamaha, Eli Tomac, join the other trio of winners and become our fourth winner in four rounds? Certainly hope so. Yeah, that would be phenomenal. It has been great, and we expect it to continue today. Let's get inside the racetrack, send it down to Jason Thomas. So two weeks ago, Jason Anderson was your overall winner, getting his first ever 450 Lucas Oil Pro Motocross win. Last week, a bit of a scare, though. Hits a barrier with his hand. Wasn't even really sure the damage extent done to it. This morning, he comes back with your fastest qualifying time. So it looks like he's ready to get back on track today. Yeah, and as you said, he did it when the track was slower getting quicker today. So that really shows something. That was something. And I talked to Jason about that barrier. What happened was there was a water uh, a, a pipe broke and they put a barrier up there to keep the riders from going into the mud. And it, it uh, never saw it. Came around about seventh, eighth lap and hit that with his hand. Yeah, fingers were swollen up, but uh, apparently, hopefully, not slowing him up today. We're about eight minutes away from our first 450 moto of the day. Eli Tomac looking to get on the board. Jason Anderson looking for another win. But don't forget, it's still the Honda Riders. One, two in the series. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. General Tire, for whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And by Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. It's Father's Day weekend. Some riders are fathers. Jagger Craig, he can become a third generation racer, hanging out with his dad, Christian. And we love this, the Roxon Caroli connection. That's Griffin Roxon there on the right in the blue shirt. And Tony Caroli's child, Chase, there on the uh, balance bike. Also did some Stasic laps. What a way to spend Father's Day weekend here, packed at High Point Motocross. As we celebrate 50 years of this series, and the same age championship had not seen a non-American champion in the 250 motocross class since Jean-Michel Bale broke through, captured the title in 1991, but then South African Greg Albertine moved to America. In 1995, Greg Albertine came to race in America after scoring three consecutive world titles in Europe. At first, Albertine had trouble staying healthy in America, as Supercross did not come naturally to the South African. But he was determined and wouldn't give up. And when he guided his Roger DeCoster-led Suzuki team to second in the 1998 250 Nationals, it was clear he had figured out American racing. In 1999, he got his 250 title bid underway right here at High Point with an impressive 1-1 finish. He would add two more overall wins that season and collect Suzuki's first AMA championship since Kent Howerton back in 1981. It was a hard-fought title with seven different winners throughout the year, with Albertine ultimately outlasting the likes of Kevin Windham 1998 champion Doug Henry and fellow world champion Sebastian Tortelli. Albertine was unable to defend his title the next year after breaking his leg in Supercross, and the whole sport would have to deal with the emergence of 250 rookie Ricky Carmichael. But the groundwork laid by Albertine back then still has effects in the paddock today. His mechanic Ian Harrison would become Roger DeCoster's right hand man at Suzuki, and when they both moved to the Red Bull KTM team, Harrison would eventually become team manager where he continues to help the brand win races and titles today. But a lot of that groundwork was laid down by Albertine, one of the first of the modern era to prove that riders from outside the United States 
could move to America and win. And also, I'll be one of the great personalities of the sport as well. Just a fun and funny guy to talk to. Same thing with Ian Harrison. Great to have them as part of the fabric of American racing. Absolutely. And then Greg laid the groundwork, and Grant Langston came over, won two or three AMA championships too. So it's uh, South Africans turned out some good American rider, American-based riders. It's a good point that you make. A Frenchman breaks through, other Frenchmen come over. A South African comes through, other South Africans come over. Yep. Inspirational right there with uh, Greg Albertine. Well, Moto one of the 250, all international. Yeah, that's right. Entire podium. Two Australians and a uh, rider out of Japan. Now, we'll uh, talk a little bit more about the uh, high point track as we get our GoPro course preview. Yep. Coming down to the first corner here. I mean, this track is one of the favorites of all riders. You can see why. The ground's perfect. Lots of traction. Uh, plenty of ruts today. This track is getting rough. Lawrence, Hunter Lawrence and Jet Lawrence both mentioned that the fact that it has uh, been tricky, not as flowing as easily as before. But Again, this is just in practice. You can imagine how much more difficult the tracks are now and how much rougher it is after a moto, and it's going to get that way all the way through today. Okay, so that's our MX versus ATV. Or this is our MX versus ATV Legends track map from High Point. Video motocross. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah. Almost like the real thing. Now, what you can't tell is how steep this track is, and the steepness really defines this facility. Yeah, lots of elevation change, and that's what makes it nice. Off camber, elevation change, true motocross. That's why the riders love it. All right, and there's different ways to attack this track. One rider has a very, very unique strategy. Let's send it down to Jason Thomas. Guys, Tony Cairoli has still chosen to use this paddle tire. Now, this is the only place that it's going to be great on the rest of the track. He has said himself that it's going to be a compromise all the way around. So all the pressure is right here. If he gets a whole shot, he's proven right. If he doesn't, he's going to have to suffer through the consequences of 35 more minutes. Paddle tire, great in a straight line. Not in the corners as much when it's hard enough, though. Yeah, he mentioned earlier that it was important uh, for him to get a good start. One of my key points. Oh, there even. You go. When a nine-time world champion uh, it solidifies my thought there, I, I feel better about myself. Uh, and one of the other things, too, is uh, the, the setup of the bike. It, the deep, deep ruts, you've got to get the bike high enough to where it's not dragging. You've also got to deal with some suspension changes. We can talk further about that as the motor goes on. But uh, the bike setup is very critical today. Those are the KTM keys to the moto. Shout out to our uh, Profiteer Power Award winner from FMF uh, last week, Henry Miller, the likable rider out of Minnesota, coming back from some injuries in Supercross. We'll give him the award a little bit later in the day as we get ready for our first 450 moto of the day here at High Point. 30 minutes and two laps, 40 riders. It's all the line right here. Three winners in the first three rounds. Can we get a fourth? It starts now. Jason Anderson, an unbelievable jump out of the gate, but he's going to get pinched off. I think that was his teammate, Joey Sabacci, in there. No, it's Chase Sexton, who's going to grab the Motorsport.com whole shot. Justin Barshez into the number two position. Yep, Jason Anderson looks like he's sitting in a fast qualifier, sitting in about fourth place. He almost looked, almost had the whole shot, not quite, just uh, got pinched off there. Chase Sexton made a little better move. Bam Bam Barsha up on the inside, sitting in second place right now, so this is a challenge. Chase Sexton has some determination today, had the second moto win all but one last week in Colorado and crashed with a few turns to go. He's leading right now. And we talked about Tony Caroli picking the scoop tire for the start. Well, he's in fourth. He hole shotted. He had three in a row, got the streak broken now, but still up front where he needs to be. Yes, uh, didn't get the whole shot this time. He'll have to deal with that paddle or scoop tire around the rest of the track. Here is Chase Sexton. And man, he always looks good at a bike. And he looks exceptionally fast right now because he's already opened up a second and a half on this Barsha and Savachi battle. Good to see Savachi. Haven't had a start like this from him so far this year. He's in second. Yeah, nice battle right now between Christian Craig, Joey Savachi, and Antonio Caroli. It looks like Christian Craig might have made his way past. Barsha and Savachi battled like this for about seventh, eighth, ninth through the pack last week. They're picking up where they left off, but now in second and third. Yeah, Christian Craig has worked his way into fourth, I believe. That's uh, wow. that's an impressive move. He's just had some good lines in the beginning there. Several passes by Craig early. There's Anderson to the outside of Green 21 trying to get Craig back. I think he might have edged him out at the top of the hill as Barsha puts the attack. There was no room, but Barsha still made the pass. <laughs> Around the outside and just pinched it off. And now here comes so Joey Savachi fighting back. We'll see what happens. Barsha's got the inside. Side by side up the hill scrubbing. Joey Savachi's got the inside as Chase Sexton leads our first lap. 
It's our Beta Motorcycles drone cam. Nice response from Savachi to repass Barsha. Meanwhile, Sexton has the gap already up to 2.4 seconds. Yeah, good comeback ride here by Joey Savachi. I mean, he's still riding his way back into shape. He was out so long, missed on the entire Supercross season. So uh, it's nice to see him up front. The torn ACL. So the main thing he had to get through was the PTSD. He tried to race the Supercross with the knee injury. And that's what he had in the back of his mind that the last time he had ridden it hurt so bad. Doesn't really have any pain in it right now. He just got to get through the mental side. And on a rutted track like this, he must have. He's riding very well right now. Yeah, this is really critical for Joey to keep his knees locked in and his toes in the right spot on the pegs. You don't need to catch a knee, uh, you know, catch an ankle, catch a knee, and do some damage here. But uh, he's looking really good right now, second place. Barsha is third. Anderson. Able to get back around Craig, and he's on the charge. Yep, just need the jersey flying out the back, a little loose, loose off the jump there, doing what Jason Anderson does, and it's just so much fun to watch. But he was the uh, fastest qualifier, and again, we talked about it earlier that he did it in the second session, which was slower. So he he laid down the laid down a heater, and it would have been probably two seconds faster than anybody in the first session if he did that that intensity. Oh, it looks like Eli Tomac has made the move on his teammate Christian Craig. The Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing duo. So as Anderson tries to move forward, Tomac looking to do the same. Anderson, can he find a way around Barsha? Yeah, we got Plessinger back in eighth. Roxon, uh, last uh, week's winner there. He's back in ninth place. Un uncharacteristic of Ken's uh, start. Uh, usually a little further up front, but uh, we'll see if he can come back from that. Anderson uses outside line of Lapago to get Craig little hitch coming out of that corner a little hesitation couldn't get the drive that he wanted not able to clear Barsha nice line there though he just jumps off the inside instead of just doing the traditional corner in that rut he just kind of jumps into the rut from the inside nice move and an inside line at the bottom of the hill from Anderson he is feeling it right now there's no doubt about it can't say enough though about this ride with Joey Savacci early pulling away from Barsha after Barsha had passed him for a moment and now Barsha has to ride defensively because he has Anderson and it might not be long until Tomac is there as well. He's going to have to fend them off. Yeah, this is a nice improvement by Justin Barsha. I know he's been wanting to get faster and faster. He just started off just really rough. When you start off that, your confidence diminishes. You just don't feel that good about yourself when you're not riding your bike. If you're a professional motorcycle racer, you do tend to judge yourself a little bit how you're doing on the bike and, and, and he just it's good to see Justin get back towards the front and now he feels like he's got the speed now he's just got to stay up there. Eli Tomac is up there now he has caught Anderson as quickly as Anderson caught Barsha we have a four rider battle because Barsha has caught Savachi for second. We'll give you the uh, FMF battle box this is our pair of Red Bull KTM teammates what great racing in the 450 class it's the next group. Caroli and his teammate Aaron Plessinger that would be seventh and eighth behind Craig yep seventh and eighth right back there and I think Aaron Plessinger's figuring out that why this guy won nine world championships he might not be at his peak in his age a little bit older than typical motocross rider maybe not quite in the shape he needs to be but he's he hasn't lost his racecraft and Aaron Plessinger is going to have to work hard to get by that triple deuce two 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 yeah and then it's Roxon and Dungy. Surprised to see them back in ninth and 10th. But that's just how thick this 450 pack is, especially now that riders like Savachi and Barsha have found their form. Savachi didn't even race our opening round. And Barsha actually had COVID between the Monster Energy Supercross campaign and here in Motocross. So he wasn't really ready to run his normal pace. They have picked it up and they've added so it's a pretty diverse cast of characters in this 450 division. This is fun to watch. I'm absolutely, I, talk, I had a chance to talk to Ryan Dungey. Very happy to know that he's feeling well. He got over his sickness a lot faster than the other parts of the paddock has. I mean, these guys just run at such a thin line physically all the time, and they go 17 rounds in 18 weeks for Supercross. Their bodies are worn down, and it's not hard for them when they start training for outdoor motocross to get an illness, and it takes even longer because they're so lean, body fat, et cetera. They're immune systems are just they're taxed and it takes them a while to get over these colds and these sicknesses two battles at once Roxon is all over Plessinger on the lower right this FMF battle box and then Anderson trying to hold Tomac at bay Tomac showed Anderson a wheel a few times Anderson responds and watch the line selection here from Roxon who's looking to make passes back to this battle Barsha Anderson Tomac 
All trying to figure out a way around Savachi. This is vintage Joey Savachi ride. Yeah, and it takes two a split screen to catch all the action yeah. out there. The people that are here at High Point Raceway, they're able to see it live, and, and they're but we're doing a good job of trying to capture, but there's just so many races around the track. So Ooh, Anderson oh. trying to squeeze it in. These are two riders not afraid of contact, especially with each other. We've seen it many times. Especially this year in Monster Energy Supercross. Hey, Anderson had to go. He had Tomac draped all over him. He makes the clutch pass. Yeah, we talked about that. When you get held up and your pace starts going just a, you know, a tenth, couple tenths of a second or a quarter of a second or half a second slower than the rider ahead of you, that rider behind you gets up behind you. Then you take so much effort to get that speed that you had, that momentum you had. It's so difficult. So Anderson made quick work of Barsha and is able to focus forward. And now Barsha is going to have to deal with Tomac. Tracking the story all year long. Barsha, Tomac, Anderson, these guys have been battling each other since they were kids. They're all in their late 20s. It's been about 20 years that they've been fighting each other. That's the thing about motocross. If you get on that national radar, you're not the local fast kid or your baseball team's good hitter. You race the best of the best. Oh. These three have had tremendous battles. Tomac slips by. Yep, and Tomac got the run around that base of the old... Bradshaw Boulevard got a good drive up that hill and used the 450 power to squirt by Justin Barsha there. And we talked about that. Anderson and Tomac, I mean, Tomac's from southwestern portion of Colorado. Jason Anderson grew up in Albuquerque. So when they raced, you know, not a whole lot of racing around that area. So when they did race, they probably had to travel two or three hours, but they raced together, even at more of a local level. And then nationally, of course, they raced all the time. So these guys know each other well, and then Justin Barsha too. So it's... Uh, 22 decades of racing against each Incredible. other. Incredible. Incredible. Okay, so the FMF Battle Box will show you rocks. And wait, one of the KTM riders has gone down. I think that's Caroli. Yep. Yep, we talk about that when you're when you're using it. I know he was gambling pretty hard for the tire choice for the whole shot, et cetera. But sometimes when you get in a section like that, maybe he didn't have the best choice of tires there. But not, not sure what happened exactly. Yeah, it's a compromise. Let's send it back down to JT. <laughs> So I just watched that crash with Christian Craig and Tony Cairoli, and Tony just came in a little bit hot. He went in to make a, an aggressive block pass there, and at the last second, he locked up both brakes and went down, or it could have been a lot worse. Oh, was, yeah, the contact that put him down. Yep. Craig was able to escape. That wouldn't have been Craig's fault. Uh, so that puts Craig into sixth, rocks into seventh. And, uh, yeah, we haven't seen Roxon this far back uh, this year. He's got a lot of work to do. Teammates about to go out at Anderson and Savachi. Look at this, Anderson around the outside, just carrying so much speed. And it you don't really realize, I mean, Joey's obviously not going to fight too hard. He knows Anderson's probably going to be in a title chase here. Uh, but on the flip side of it all, I mean, Jason's just able to find a little better line, carry a little more speed around here. And then we've noticed multiple passes that have happened at high point. Riders going the long way around just because they're able to carry more speed and the inside rut starts getting deteriorating over time. It gets a little slower until the rider figures it out. Wait, this line's now become slower. I need to move too. So uh, Anderson made that pass using the outside. Impressive for Anderson, but 8.2 seconds is the gap to Chase Sexton, and he's done it in 10 minutes of racing. Sexton taking a little vengeance out after he crashed away a moto win last week. He is walloping the field right now. It's, he, he's so far out ahead, it's hard for us to even focus on it because that's not where the racing action is. But he's running 204 ones, so almost a 204 flat lap time. And the next best lap time is a 205.4. So he's got the field covered by 1.3 seconds that last lap. That is incredible. Tomac looking for running room against Savachi. He didn't even use the berm there. He tried to use that hard pack on the inside. Look, trying to show him a wheel. Oh, mistake from Savachi. But Tomac wasn't close enough to take advantage. This is for third. These guys used to be teammates back when Savachi was on this team. This is the second go around with Kawasaki. Tomac was there back in those days. So most of this 450 field, not strangers to each other. This is Barsha and Craig, I would imagine, battling here. As we look at the uh, FMF battle box. Oh, sorry, that is Roxon yep. and Craig, yep. And that would be for sixth and seventh. It'd be valuable points for Roxon to try to make it up, but Craig, he wants these 450 riders to know that he is not a pushover. He's here to race them. He will be full-time in this class next year. So Roxon wants the points. But Craig, certainly not going to make it easy on him. Yeah, Christian had a tough uh, tough weekend at uh, Thunder Valley, but he's looking to bounce back here on a Father's Day. Uh, so I think 
you know, with that little contact with Caroli also lost up some momentum too, but uh, hopefully he'll get it back and get back on pace. Back to Savacci on the upper left. Tomac using some different lines to find an opening, try to make it happen. This is a renaissance ride for Joey Savacci. Caught a great break. This bike was available. Adam Cincerullo out with an ACL injury, but here's the interesting thing. Their ACL injury, Savacci and Cincerullo happened around the same time. It shows the desperation. Savacci wanted on this team and this bike so badly, he's willing to come back early to get a shot. Yeah, it's a good six-month recovery, and Joey did a little faster than that, and you think that uh, if he wouldn't have done that, would he have had the opportunity if that bike would have kept that number nine on it, not the number 17. So good on some Joey, uh, ride himself in, into shape and, and show the Kawasaki rider, you know, team why he should be out there. And who knows, if Adam comes back before the season's over, it'd be nice, uh, maybe they can get a third bike out there. It'd be fun to see Joey get an extra chance, but Eli Tomac, just doing what Eli Tomac does, carries Ooh. all the crazy amount of speed. What a, he can turn a bike. It's just impressive. I mean, we accolades, there's not enough of them for the guy. You just turned in awe when you saw that move. You saw it <laughs> coming, you knew it was coming, and it was still impressive. I just shake my head when I watch him do it, because he, he's as good as anybody do it. And we talk about it, and I've talked about it before. Yep. He does it so often with feet on the pegs. He doesn't even put his feet down half the time. He does those kind of moves. But it's, you know, in my favorite corner again, right, with the, with the wall, the, yeah. uh, the high point wall. Okay, so Tomac finally clears Savachi. Can he close back up to Anderson? Oh, no. Tony Caroli is out of this moto. Maybe crash-induced trouble running into Craig there in that billboard turn. Yep. See a little gesticulation of the hands there. I mean, not uncommon from where he's talking with your hands there. Oh, a little bit. Italian. Okay. <laughs> Italian, Lily. <laughs> but uh, maybe he's describing exactly what happened. Looked like he was just saying kind of lost both ends of the bike. But... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't quite read sign language, but it didn't take a lot, too much to translate that. Savachi trying to stick with Tomac as Tomac tries to close down on Anderson. Anderson had a clear racetrack, still lost ground to Sexton. What did you see from Tomac there? Yeah, just the feet on the peg. That's a double apexing corner, too. It's a downhill corner, and he just had his feet on the pegs the whole time. He's up on the toes. You see on the foot peg, he keeps his feet out of the ruts. Um, those are the corners you can easily twist your knee and carry him and, ch and like Chase has his you know foot dangling a little bit and Eli just those corner that last corner He had his feet on the pegs the entire time Haven't seen much of Chase Sexton not just us the rest of the field and he is walloping them right now Let's send it down to Jason Thomas So Chase Sexton got the whole shot and really checked out early and as you guys know Joey Savacci and Justin Barsha were almost playing defense for him and allowed him to pull out this gap now he's looking at a 10-second advantage over Jason Anderson. He can really just manage it from here. But Anderson was not as quick, even with open racetrack, the last time around. Sexton maintaining that uh, second or so advantage per lap. Halfway through this 30-minute and two-lap moto. 15 minutes down, 15 minutes to go. You can save 15% or more on your insurance with Geico. We got Brock Lever in here marveling over Eli Tomac, but also marveling over the style of Chase Sexton. I just said I, I'm, I'm knocking on wood in here. I'm doing whatever I can because I do not want to give the announcers jinx. But this, so far for me, this is Chase's most impressive ride. And I know oh. it's only halfway over, but I'm watching where he's carrying cornering speed, how he's doing it, the momentum he's carrying in every single corner. And it's just, I'm awestruck right now. He won both motos at our opener. You think might be even better than this. The start was even better. He's had to work his way through traffic in some of the races. The Motosport.com whole shot here. So I thought Anderson, he had the jump for sure, but he gets squeezed out by a couple riders, bumped by Caroli. His teammate Savachi in front of him, and through all that, it allows Sexton to get the Motosport.com whole shot. Yeah, it looked like Joey all, I mean, he had it, and he had one little bobble right at the main corner, the part of the corner there. And when he does that, it allows Chase around the outside. There it is, Chase yep. Sexton. Motosport.com whole shot, and boy, did he ever know what to do with it. Gotta be angry. Last week, said the right things on the podium after the race, but I uh, heard before he walked up to the podium, he was furious with himself, had the moto win in hand, just tipped it over in those ruts. Colorado doesn't want to make the same mistake today. You know, and I'm watching, I'm not only watching Sexton <laughs> going and just carrying incredible cornering speed, but I'm watching his motorcycle too. Did talk to the Honda staff a little bit about what changes they might be making. I talked about the importance of the keys to the moto with spike setup, and they did say as the 
this track traditionally gets more, I guess we call them chucker bumps, they're square edge bumps, acceleration bumps, uh, that, that tends to, to back off a little bit of the high speed compression on your motorcycle to allow the not the bike to be able to, to move a little more freely and not lock up at, when the shaft the shock speed gets high so I know they did that the bike looks really good um, tracking very very well and, and they might have made the right adjustment ETS racing fuels drone cam been tracking the progress of Ken Roxon there he is in the center there on the Honda HRC machine trying to get to Craig Craig has done an excellent job here, has not allowed Roxon get close enough to show him a wheel. And Ryan Dungey following his old rival Roxon through. He's gotten around Plessinger. So Dungey looking good here in the second half of this moto. Keeping Roxon in sight. Yep, and we got the Club MX rider. Garrett Marchbanks worked his way into the top 10. There's another rider that was a young up and coming mini bike rider from the Team Green program. It looked like he couldn't, you know, was one of those can't miss kids. Had a, you know, had some good rides with Pro Circuit and then, uh, you know, had a couple up and down sessions. Now he found his way back to the Club MX team. Seems to be very, very comfortable. And as he physically got larger and larger, it was clear that he needed to get up on the 450 machine. And he's done a great job adapting to that more power and the bigger bike. And uh, he's continues to get in the top 10. Yep, solid right now, right behind this battle, which is Craig, Roxon, Dungey, and then Plessinger would be the next rider in the order, but look at Dungey keeping Roxon in check. Yeah, he's definitely there, and this is just, I guess, uh, reinforces when I mentioned the keys to the moto. Good starts, good starts, good start. Broken record, but you see this is just keeps telling you why that's important. Roxon, last week's winner. Yep gets a poor start. Again, uncharacteristic of Ken Roxon, but his poor start is fighting really hard for a seventh and eighth place finish right now. So he's working real hard coming up on Christian Craig, hopefully, you know, and his he's trying to get around him, but. Oh, Craig's fighting hard for the position. He's making it tough. Craig at one point was almost off the track, but managed to get back over and cover the line. It was way wide again, got to cover the line. So Roxon is doing everything, but Craig is proving to be a fighter in this moto. I think this is a battle for the lead. It's for sixth. Yeah, it's just these riders are all so good right now. If you don't, if you if you start well behind them, you're going to be have a long, long day. It looks like somebody's bike's smoking, or so, I don't know. Sure, I can see it on the screen there. It looks like uh, I don't know if that's just a dust or what it is, but yeah, if someone got off the track. They get kicked yeah. up with dust, but, but yeah, I'm not sure if that's dust or smoke. As we'll know soon enough. Barsha's all alone in fifth ahead of this group. It's about four seconds to him. Timing and scoring has Tomac slipped into second. We'll figure that out in a moment. Let's send it back down to Jason Thomas. So Jason Anderson made a critical mistake there and has fallen back behind his teammate Joey Savacci and got a lot of work to do. The issue here is he can't afford to give away points. He's already made too many mistakes and then had the unfortunate incident with the barrier last week. So he's got to get back to the front here. Wow, so that's a big shakeup, JT. Anderson going from second to fourth and Roxon finally has the opening he wants on Craig and is able to make the pass stick. So that will put Roxon into the number six position. Uh, but Anderson needs to make up points on riders like Tomek, not lose them. And it just happened. Yeah, this is a the racing, the other riders in the competition is just too close this year to be given, to having mistakes and giving up points. As unfortunately, we didn't get to see exactly on the camera what happened to Anderson there, but you know, don't want to be going from second to fourth. Again, you made his, giving up points to Eli Tomac is not what you want to do for a championship. Oh, Craig fighting back on Roxon. Going to try the outside. That's where he was, I guess, on purpose the previous lap all the way to the edge. Almost able to make the move. Yep, he's working some of that country club grass out there on that very <laughs> edge. <laughs> and takes a full outside line here, too, it which is very surprising. And Dungey makes the move. I, I, I'm not sure why Christian went out there. It seemed like a long ways to go, but Dungey snuck up on the inside. So hopefully Christian will be able to make an adjustment and switch his line there. Back to our leader, Chase Sexton, with a mistake by Anderson. The lead is now 15 seconds. He is out to hammer them today. Oh, Ooh, don't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Tuck oh. the front a little bit, stuck the leg out. Oh. Man, that could have been bad. <laughs> Trying to avoid the big mistake. Chase Sexton way out front. Can he maintain it? Stay with us.
CRF 250R. Lighter, faster, stronger. Ready to help you find your edge. And it's become now a, top, a topic of discussion, and that's not what Chase, so Chase needs to break that. At this point right now, I mean, he's got a 16 second lead, almost 17 second lead on Eli Tomac, one of the best riders in the world. Chase just needs to keep doing what he's been doing, but you know, don't overly over push it. Just keep doing what you're doing. So he looks like for some, he just he's on one of those days right now. This could be a this could be a one one day real easily if he if he keeps this up. Really showing something because he won the opener, but he has won at that track before. So I think the real question was was that an opening round thing? And often the first round of motocross, the results are not reflective of what the rest of the season. You go in around four and you do this kind of damage, that's a statement that he's trying to make right now. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Beautiful day for some Pro Motocross racing, and it always looks good when you're watching Chase Sexton. Great style on the motorcycle. An unbelievable speed today. 17 second lead. Just keeps growing. He's just basically putting about a second on Tomac every single lap. One to 1.2 seconds every single lap. And uh, that's something to be bragging about if you're saying you're oh, putting yeah. that kind of distance on Eli Tomac. But Chase is just flat on it right now. He's having one of those days you can see he's just not putting a wheel wrong. Style's perfect, line selection's good, really good flow. If you watch, he's just carrying a lot of speed mid-corner. Uh, what an unbelievable start to the year for Honda. They dominated the opener. They were 1-2 in all four motos, something that hadn't been done in over 30 years when Honda actually did it in the 1990 at the opener. They came into this race having won seven of the 12 motos this year. They already got up to eight out of 13. The Lawrence brothers, Hunter taking the first moto win in the 250s. Could be a ninth moto win in 14 if Sexton can hold on to this. Just an absolute renaissance summer thus far for the factory Honda crew. Yeah, I mean, Chase Sexton, I think, only raced the high point one time. I think it was like... He, he, on a 450, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yep. and he had, on a four, I think he was fifth overall, fourth, a fourth and a fifth, and for fifth overall. So, I mean, he clearly shows speed. He's older now, more mature. And uh, as we see, Jason Anderson's not going to let... Wow! <laughs> he's he's come he's come back alive, and he's not going to let Eli just walk away with the second place. So he's gotten around his teammate, uh, Savachi, to get to third, and he wants to repass Eli Tomac, which which is no laughing matter, especially late in the moto. Eli is as tough as they come, the three-time champion of this class. Anderson looking to get around him. No, I chuckle only because he's Jason Anderson is truly, to me, one of the most fun riders to watch on a racetrack. He just is, uh, just looks like he's having fun. He's loose on the bike, and he's going incredibly fast. So see if he can make, uh, make that move on Eli. All right, it'll be like that uh, crash never happened. He was in second, dropped back to fourth, and looking to pick it back up. I don't know if Tomac just got the memo, though, that Anderson was there, because now he has put the hammer down. Yep, he's got the guess who on his chalkboard. Here comes number 21. Mm -hmm. Over the tunnel, double. And Anderson's going to have to reset and go back after him. Tomac adds a few bike lengths. Yep, both of these guys switched teams for the 2022 season, and it just... Uh, Fun to watch them just both get along with them. Bikes well and ride like this. And oh, yeah. It was spectacular to watch them duke it out in Monster Energy Supercross. Tomek got the title there. Anderson was second. And it is a rematch right now in a Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Although they are a long ways back of Sexton. And they put on a big duel for the number two spot. Yep, you saw that little right-hander previously. The uh, rut's obviously getting a little bit of a chucker in it. The riders are having to do a mid-air correction as they take off. But uh, Anderson goes a little different route there from Tomac. Tomac took the inside on the on the knob in the inside of the corner there, and Anderson just opted to 
keep it pinned around the outside to no surprise, huh? Jeez, Anderson was practically wheeling while turning in that right-hander. I don't even know how he did that and kept the front tire in the rut. He is on the move. I don't even know how these guys do half the stuff on the board. <laughs> <laughs> One side of my ego tells me, oh, it's, the bikes are so much better, and the other side of me is like, these guys are just phenomenal. The level of skill that they have and the practice and the time they spend at it, it's just elevated the sport to levels I never thought were possible, to be honest with you. Man, they are hauling the mail right now, and to think that they're really not even closing much on Sexton while pushing this hard. They made up a second on him. We go back to our beta drone shot. Really gives you the idea of the lines and the ruts. Slight variance. Anderson versus Tomac through that section. Yeah, it's uh, they just it's nice. They're finding two different ways to accomplish the same thing. And as we mentioned, now the when soon as Anderson started getting close to Eli, Eli's now picked it up. And now they're starting to actually do lap times faster than Chase Sexton. So they're cutting into that lead. What was at one point oh, almost, big time, almost yeah. 17 or 18 seconds is now down to 14.7. So and now 14.3. So they're taking anywhere between a half to even, we saw earlier, maybe even more than that. So Eli Tomac, trust me, he has pride too. He doesn't want Anderson to get around him. He knows this could very well be the guy that he's battling for a championship. I know we're only a third of the way through the series, but uh, these guys are starting to push it. Marcia's back, or sorry, Marcia. Sexton is back to way down into the 218 lap times, or 208 lap times. It's best with the 203. He's trying to bring it home and manage it while these two are duking it out. Anderson. Yep, there's that little kicker at the end of that. As soon as they go to take off, the camera doesn't do it 100% justice, but you can tell it's a downhill right hander, and then they've taken off and doing the double. He just over jumped that triple, triple. and it's hard. Exactly. So to do that, you have to be carrying a lot of speed, and it was almost unintentional. I mean, he's just carrying, pushing so hard that he was carrying more speed than he normally has. But these guys are just on it. Good race to watch right now. Hey, but a real Tomac back in despite those mistakes. He's loose. He didn't mean it to be that loose. Let's take a look at this again. Okay, the Eli triples this, and they'll watch Anderson right here. He triples and a half. <laughs> That's a, a, <laughs> just flat lands the thing after the triple. Yep. And quickly regroups and keeps the heat on Eli Tomac. Yep, down at the low section here. Really steep climb. Tomac's back in, kicks off a rut a little bit. And didn't get the best drive, and they'll look at Anderson. Ken Roxon in a battle right now. Is that Ryan Dungey making the move on him? Yes, it is. Man. Dungy has made the pass. Roxon trying to get him back. Might as well be back 2014-2015 uh, wow. days right now as Dungy and Roxon are going at it. Nice little move by Ryan right there. Just kind of hits the bumps. And as soon as he was seated, he was ready to get back on the gas and accelerate it out of the corner. But look at this. And that's Savachi right in front of them. So they're going for fifth. Roxon able to close it back off on Dunge. Yeah, Dunge is frustrated that he didn't close that deal completely. He had it closed, but then Roxon retaliated. And then they're both going after Joey Savachi. So this is a battle for fifth place. Hey, I'll tell you, it's still encouraging for uh, Dungy. It's 28 seconds down on the leader. We've seen some motos where he's 40 to 50 down. And if that's the measurement, how close he is to the lead pace, this is a big improvement. Yeah, let me uh, check that battle for fourth place, because that's the 51 of Justin Barsha right ahead. Happened? So we are seeing just this what we saw in the 250 race earlier. We had three or four riders all battling one position. This, is, uh, this isn't this is for the win. We have a battle. Sexton's by himself. We got a Tomac Anderson battle for second. But now we have this four-way battle for fourth. Oh, Dungy's working hard. He wants another shot at Roxon. Roxon has to deal with Savachi. Savachi dealing with Barsha. Said it about a hundred times, I feel, this year, but the racing has been phenomenal in 2022. Roxon's going to try the outside on Savachi, no room. And hey, hats, tip of the hat to Joey Savachi. I mean, he's really starting to ride himself into a, being a, you know, somebody contending and battling for top five finishes. So it's nice to see Joey back up to the speed that we know he is capable. It's tough coming back from a knee injury as serious as his was. Yeah, just jumping back in the Kawasaki. It's been a few years since he's been on it. And then trying to balance training motos and testing motos. Roxon, he wishes this wasn't the case. He's been trying to get Savachi the whole time. Still can't pull it off. There it is. Side by side, can he get a drive out of that rut? Savachi will fight him on the inside, holds him off. OK, 
Gosh, I think Ryan Dungy, he's got to be frustrated because this is the section right here that Ryan Dungy made his pass before he had that inside on Kenny. Kenny Can he do it again? Yeah. Oh, oh, he did not. <laughs> but you know what? It almost, that was al an almost for sure. There's, uh, Ryan had the inside line there. Kenny got stood up in the rut a little bit. Unfortunately, Ryan also made a mistake coming out of that rut. You can tell the track is just getting torn up and, and it's being changing every single lap. So these guys are having to make adjustments every time they go through the section. Yeah, Dungy, little mistake, bounced him out of the seat. That bails Roxon out. Roxon free to go back after Zavachi. Zavachi and Barsha, they battled pretty much every inch of our previous moto a week ago, and they've been darn close the entire moto here. Yep, got uh, Barsha, Justin Barsha did a 209-1, and then uh, Savachi did a 208-9, so that's only a couple tenths different. And then all three of these riders are all with it, just a couple tenths. Dungy again! Yep. yep. Try to use the lap Look rider. Look at that, Roxon. Ooh, they're going to meet at the exit of this corner. That was close. Oh, that was really close. Dungy, being a vet there, knows that our lap rider might give him an opportunity that he might not see again, so he was trying to take advantage of it. Dungy just dancing down this hill. Relentless with the attacks on Roxanne. They almost come together again. Does Dungy have the pass made? There's lap traffic. There's Savachi. Look at Roxon fighting back. It looks just like what we saw, reminiscent of what we saw at Thunder Valley with the Tomac, where Roxon is not uh, giving up. Look at that. Dungey got this held is, up with the lap rider, and Roxon gets him back. Yeah, this is the second or third time we've seen that today. And then on top of that, we saw it last week with uh, Roxon just not giving up those passes as easily as these uh, riders. Maybe the history used to be. I mean, it seemed like Kenny didn't fight back as much. I've seen a lot more fight this year in him. Well, he said he wanted to be relentless this year, and that's what he has done, fighting back. But, man, great run by Dungy. Look, this is the rider that won our last race, and Dungy's giving him all he can handle. Dungy has been retired since the 2017 season. It's a shock to hear that he was going to come out of retirement for his old team, Red Bull KTM. He said he's here for the challenge, and definite signs of improvement today. Not the track position, seventh place. That's pretty much where he's been all year. Uh, but, but 32 seconds down the leader and keeping up with Roxon is a sign. Yeah, I can attest to the fact that at Thunder Valley, Ryan had something going on, a cold. You could hear it in his voice. And then I just talked to him before today's race, and, and he sounded just the normal crystal clear. Eyes were clear. looked like he felt totally fine. So I do expect him to have a good day today. Savachi just in front of them as we are on to the last lap. Chase Sexton looking to bring this one home. We won't even mention. I don't won't even mention what happened last week. <laughs> We're not even going to talk about it. Nope, he's <laughs> nope. fine. 12 second gap. What are you talking about? I don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, no worries. Selective memory. Yep. Uh, looks like Tomac has second lockdown. That was a great challenge from Anderson. But uh, Tomac has opened it back up. And look at Sexton. He is taking it on a cruise now. Yeah, Anderson had a tough little lap right there. Dropped back into the 210s when Tomac is doing 207 one. So actually, Eli had the fastest lap. There, but uh, Sexton's only a few tenths of slower. But he's got that luxury of not having to worry about it with 12-second lead. Chase Sexton, what a way to bounce back from a bitter disappointment last week if he holds on. And you got to keep in mind, look, he won the first two motos of the year. He almost won the second two motos of the year, just missed both of them. Almost won the previous moto. Looks like he's going to win this moto. Really, you take a fourth out of the picture, the first moto last week, and he has either won or been in contention to win every moto so far this year. No, oh, it's no question he's going to be there for the championship unless something really catastrophic catastrophic happens between now and then. But, uh, you know, this is still, it's 24 motos, and we're only a third of the way through, and he looks like he's on his way to a moto win here. So this could, uh, this could be a championship that he's uh, well-deserved, I guess. By far the most dominant moto win we've seen in a year of parody. Chase Sexton, vengeance on the mind after throwing it away last week. Not this time. Moto one at high point, dominated by Chase Sexton. This battle is still raging. Dungy, Savachi, Roxon. Dungy got Roxon on the inside. This time he makes it stick. He's not done. Roxon's going to go after him around the outside. Dungy's looking at Savachi coming down this hill right here, but he opens up that inside. And earlier, that inside was a little bit faster. Oh, Roxon wants Ryan, to use yep, it. And Ryan might have opened the door. Oh, but he's scrub. Yep. To the checkers. 
Savachi does the rocks side by side, and Dungey gets six. Oh, my goodness. What a great one. Ryan took it bad. Look at Joey. And no, Joey fell after the finish line. I'm telling you, these ruts are... If all of us were out there riding, I guarantee there'd be a lot more of us doing that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been there, done it, I know. <laughs> these are some tricky sections. Not often you see a rider fall after their finish line like Man. that, but... Uh, what a race down to the check for Stavacci, fifth. That's a big jump for him in just his third race back from a serious injury. Fantastic. Hey, hats off to Barsha. Justin Barsha finishing fourth. I mean, that's impressive, too. Anderson, third. And that's an incredible ride by by Chase Sexton. I don't, there's not enough words to say what he just did right there. I mean, to win like that and to do it in style, Eddie, that's a statement win. Yeah, no doubt, because every moto this year has been super competitive until this one where he absolutely rolled this field. And it really wasn't until he backed down the pace later in the race that they were making up any ground on him. He had it in complete control. There's his dad, and they're going to get back to business. Podium interview and a second 450 moto a little bit later this afternoon. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. We're back, fans getting to hang out in the midway, posing by Jason Anderson's bike, that uh, race bike, the actual race bike, podium bound. And we'll show you how the Lucas Oil race recap 450 Moto 1. I thought Anderson's 21 Kawasaki was going to hole shot this one. Instead, it was his teammate Joey Savacci and then Sexton around the outside. Yeah, and look, when Chase got the hole shot right there, that's just what he wanted because the style, he's feeling it today. There's no question about it. And he pulled a huge gap immediately. Watch this. Tony Caroli tries a pass on Christian Craig. He ends up going down. And whatever damage he incurred there would actually end his moto. That was it for the nine time world champion of Italy. Should be back though for Moto2. Doesn't look like he is busted up. And hopefully that bike is fixable. Jason Anderson on a run. He gets around his teammate Savachi here to get the second. Yeah, he is on an epic run towards the front. And something happened where we didn't get to see it on film, unfortunately. And he went down, or, and then Tomac got back around him. But we saw like, this battle right here. Eli Tomac making his way through. One more shot at Joey Savachi. Squares him up in the wall corner and makes a beautiful pass. Lighting up that corner. This would put Tomac into third, but then when Anderson had the crash, we said we didn't see that, uh, would put him into second, then Anderson would come back and challenge Tomac for the number two spot. He gave him a really strong fight all the way towards the end, and then I think something, maybe another mistake at the end, gave a little bit of cushion, but I tell you, Anderson, if he gets a start, he could be somebody to contend with too. Oh yeah, but this moto, no doubt about it, dominated by Chase Sexton. Way to bounce back after throwing a moto win away on the last lap of the crash a week ago. So we can officially say that he's put that behind him. Sexton, a moto winner again. And series points leader still. Let's send it down to Jason Thomas. Chase Sexton, you get the whole shot there. And it looked like at the very beginning, you put a ton of focus on putting in your best laps early so you could get out front and then kind of manage the race from there. How'd you feel through it? Yeah, exactly. I just wanted to get out front. With all these ruts, you really want to have a clear track and uh, be able to focus on what you got to do. So for me, I just, uh, it was a perfect race, hit my marks, um, didn't make too many mistakes, and uh, saved a lot of energy, so I'm ready for second moto. Yeah, that's going to help, too. So he backed it down, uh, down the stretch, because there'll be another 30-minute plus two-lap race in an hour for these riders. Here are the results. Fantastic race. Fourth, Barsha, Savachi, fifth, Dungey, Roxon, sixth, seventh, Craig behind them in eighth. Plessinger and Marchbanks round out the top 10. Marchbanks again on that uh, muck off Club MX FXR Yamaha. Benny Bloss just outside the top 11 at a practice crash. Uh, was banged up a little bit from last week, so good to see him return. Jeremy Smith, his season debut, finishes up in 23rd, just out of the points. Tony Gurley, as we saw, did not finish this one. Back to the podium. Eli Tomac, runner-up position in that moto. It looked like once you got going, the pace was pretty strong, and these second motos have been incredibly good for you. you feel like you can get up front maybe in that second one. Yeah, I was I was doing what I could what I could there, and uh, Jason made the mistake. That got me into second, and I, and I found a couple lines really late in the moto that I think would have helped me that first half. So got to be uh, smarter with my lines next time early on, and uh, hopefully I've got that figured out now and give that a good push in uh, moto two. All right, looking forward to a battle. Maybe Tomac in there with Sexton in the second moto. He's in a rush to get back to the pits and get ready. 
We'll have a weekend off after our race at High Point. We'll go to Redbud, July 4th weekend. That's tradition for motocross fans. Redbud! Then Southwick, Sand Track in Massachusetts, July 9th. Minnesota, Washington, upstate New York will be the next stops. We're headed back to the podium, Jason Thomas. What an adventure it was for Jason Anderson in this moto, JT. So Jason Anderson, fastest qualifier, get into second place, then you make the small mistake that you know drops you back into third place. What exactly happened? We couldn't see it. Yeah, you know, I went into that second line when I was behind a lapper and I didn't take it all day and I just kind of rushed the situation a little bit. But um, yeah, it was on me and tried to make a run back on Eli, but man, these guys, uh, we all got some fight in us right now. So uh, I'm excited to come out that next moto and try and get a good start. But um, I really want to hopefully uh, get up front and run away. But these guys are making it tough on me and uh, I'm ready to go. So we'll see how we do. Moto win, he could still get the overall if it bounces his way. Yeah, he could. We've seen things happen. I mean, Anderson could win the second moto, maybe a Tomac another second, and then second and third, he can win yep. the overall. Anything can happen. It's motocross. <laughs> he won it with a 1-3 at uh, Hangtown, so he's he certainly still in contention. We're not done. We're only halfway through the day. Second moto's coming your way live on Mav TV and Mav TV Plus. These fans are ready for it. Two more hours of racing coming your way, starting with 250 Moto 2. And don't forget our post-race show inside Pro Motocross every Tuesday evening at 6.30 right here on Mav TV. All right, fantastic racing again in the 450 class for the six-time champion, it's Brock Glover. I'm Jason Wygan, Jason Thomas, good job patrolling the racetrack. We'll be right back after this 250 Moto 2. We send our congrats out to 450 Moto 1 winner, Chase Sexton.